Your water heater has three states of operation. Either it works well, it doesn't work at all, or a mysterious third state, which is sort of a mix of the first two. I'd like to show you how to test what might be wrong with your water heater without actually showing you how to fix it. But first, we need to understand how the vast majority of water heaters work. It's basically a large insulated container. Cold water comes in either from the bottom or from the top and led to the bottom by a pipe called a dip tube, which completely fills the tank. As this cold water is heated inside the tank, it becomes red and behaves the very same way hot air does inside an enclosed space. It rises to the top. And when you open a tap somewhere in your home, a hot tap, the hot water is let out of the top of the tank and into your plumbing, rushing towards that open tap. Cold water is always trying to push in from the bottom and the release of pressure from the newly vacated hot water at the top allows cold water to enter the tank. Nothing mechanical, no pumps, all very simple, relying solely on the pressure of water in your plumbing system. But just what heats your water? In most cases, if it's electrical, and the conventional 40 or 60 gallon tank, this is accomplished by heating elements inside the tank. These come in several shapes and sizes. Here's a new element, and here's a crusty old element. They basically consist of a metal sheath encasing a resistance wire, typically nichrome, surrounded by electrical insulation like magnesium oxide. Nichrome is the same metal which grills your toast. And magnesium oxide is sometimes known as magnesia, the dietary supplement. Sometimes the metal sheath becomes damaged, perhaps through corrosion, allowing water to seep in. And that's the end of that heating element. There are usually two of these heating elements controlled by thermostats pressed against the walls of the tank. The elements work in an alternating fashion and never operate at the same time. So everything works well and you've got sustained hot water or you don't have hot water at all. But the third state is when you have hot water for just a few minutes, then it prematurely turns cold. So what causes that? It's usually that one of the two elements isn't working and can't keep water at a constant hot temperature inside the tank. Or less frequently, the plastic dip tube has broken inside the tank, allowing cold water to bypass its way to the top of the tank and out the top to your hot tap. This is where I tell you to not do what follows and ask you to remember that I asked you not to do it because there's a real danger of injuring or killing yourself or damaging stuff. But this is how I would do it. Shut off the power. A water heater typically runs on 240 volts. Sometimes electrical panels are mislabeled or in Greek. Removing the panels, there'll be some sort of insulation. Unless you've already been rummaging inside here and, like me, didn't bother putting the insulation back afterwards. You should put the insulation back afterwards. These are the butt ends of the heating elements, where the wires are attached. Here you have the thermostats. They have temperature controls, which are factory preset. And this one at the top might have a reset button. You can always give this circuit breaker a little push for good luck. These have been known to trip for reasons. So how do you test the heating element? Use a circuit tester to make sure the power has been turned off. Test it right here on these two terminals. Also, don't completely trust your life to a circuit tester. These things are known to fail or the battery runs out and you don't want to find out about a life-threatening amount of power with your fingers. My trick, please don't do this, is that once I'm absolutely certain there's no power, please don't do this. I short the circuit with a screwdriver or touch the wires together if I can. Since there's no power, there'll be no angry sparks, right? Also, please don't do this. So, power's off. Detach one of the wires from the heating element. Set your multimeter to the lowest ohm setting and touch these two terminals with your tester leads. You should get 10 to 30 ohms. 
If the reading is too low or indicates OL, the element needs to be replaced. Usually the problem will be with one of the two heating elements. If not, it could be the dip tube or the thermostats. Now, at least you know the why. What I haven't shown you is how to replace a heating element. That's a whole different kind of beans, which someone much more capable here on YouTube can show you. Or I'll wait till I actually need to change an element. I'd have to partially or completely empty my tank, wasting close to 40 gallons of hot water and the electricity and potentially getting water on the floor. Also, I'm lazy. I'll get to a follow-up video eventually. In the meantime, you can watch my video on how to prolong the lifespan of your water heater by replacing the sacrificial anode. Anyway, love you.